stream. I'm in a very rare good mood today, so we're starting with some jokes here in the chat room. Yeah. There was a story in the news about some $9 million catfishing case in Alaska today. Bob, maybe you want to check it out. Sounds right up your alley. All right, guys. Um, we're going to play Weird Wednesday today, Unusual Openings. We've got our standard time controls, 5 plus 3 through 7 plus 3. Blitz said Rapid Chess. The focus is on playing unusual stuff, uh, usually on my part, but you're welcome to join the... You're welcome to join the spirit of things and play some unusual openings yourself. I'd like to welcome Astrobate, Nafidov, Bob Sakamano, Slaggy, that's me. Bob Sakamano, I said. Merle Dixon, welcome all you guys. Bob, you beat the 2100. Nice job. You guys know what day it is, right? It's hump day. So don't forget to clutch your camels. We'll see if camel culture, camel clutcher comes in today. What day is it, Astrobate? It's hump day. Yeah, baby. All right, here we go. That was right on cue. We've got a challenge from BS Deuce 7. That is some BS there. 7 plus 3, Bob getting underway with the Bob. Bob pretending to be pretending to be a pet detective. Let's get started. 7 plus 3 with Bob. Hump day for camels. All right, let's play some E4. I think I surprised Camel yesterday. He handled the open cilian okay, but he wasn't really prepared for me to come at him. Critical matchup from the tournament yesterday when Camel hung his queen in a close to equal position. We've got more than one Camel though. I should be specific. Camel culture. Camel clutcher. He was close in the tournament yesterday, finished second this week. We've also got Yabatas, spectacular camel, so we can't neglect him. Welcome guys to the stream. I've got all the submissions for the Thursday subscriber stream um, early for some reason. It was almost like there was a mass hallucination that today was Thursday. Because basically it was funny, like I've never had that happen where I had like eight or nine people submit the subscriber stream games so early. And I thought, what is it? Did I, did I say today was Thursday or? was kind of funny that it all came down at the same time. Bob playing the Accelerated Dragon. Um, Alright, I'm trying to understand this old comment. I get my play on words. <laughs> Alright, Bishop C4. Anyway, Mr. Spock, you know, we don't expect Mr. Spock to have a sense of humor anyway. It's alright. It's all right. It's, you've got the logic, Spock. It's not necessary to to be funny as well. All right. So Bishop E3. A6. Highly unusual move here. Gives his queen... Well, he keeps... What am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. Knight C6. No. Okay. A6. I don't give a crap about that move. I don't think it really does anything. Not particularly relevant here. The Vanquisher of Slaggy. Arsenal fan Rich. Resting on his laurels. How are your laurels doing today? You gotta be in it to win it, Arsenal fan. Queen C7. Looking for the fishing pole down there. How's your fishing, Bob? No fishing poles. Anyway, this is a standard move in such situations. Situations. Astrobate's big on the fishing pole. B5. Going for the queen side. Consistent. Quite the unusual accelerated dragon. Hmm. But at the same time, I don't see anything like an obvious way to continue here. Maybe it's not bad for black. What's the problem? An early b5, threatening b4. Undermining my e4 pawn. f4, b4. 
I could always play knight d5 if I have to. Bob caught me when I'm not really warmed up yet. Jim is here. Good to see you guys. Queen c7, a6, and b5 in the accelerated dragon. Hmm. Feels like there should be something wrong with this. Um, but I'm not coming up with anything really con constructive here. I mean, I could play knight d5 with a space advantage. It's certainly not what I really had in mind. f4, b4. Perhaps e5, bc, e takes f6. Pawn takes b2, <laughs> pawn takes g7. a1 queen takes on f8 queen. Unconvincing. I guess what would Nefidov do? He would play a3. This is the automatic Nefidov move. Probably not great though. It looks too slow. Really a waste of time. I mean, I had to defend my e4 pawn, but it just looks too slow. It's it's like kind of passive for white. It feels like I'm playing the creepy crawly. The creepy crawly is this Basman opening. Fuchsia would know. A3 and H3. You need an H4. Yeah, but that doesn't happen here. Unless you're Clash Kid, where you just randomly play H4, H5 after Kingside Castling. He did that against me in the Simul on Sunday. Simul Sunday, don't forget, guys. You would not be playing Bishop C4. It's outside your, your comfort zone. The comfort zone. So now F4... F4, I guess. Oh man, I just hung a pawn. I just lost my central pawn. Like knight takes d4, bishop d4, knight e4. He just wins a pawn. It's so stupid. I can still outplay him from here. One pawn isn't going to be enough to save Bob. Creepy Nefida, what's this draw for? I'm gonna beat you a pawn down, man. No problem. Pawn isn't enough. Nefida was hurt. The A3 creepy Nefida move. A3 is the macho move to play on the white side of the Sicilian. Favorite of, of Misha. Bob, never ever take candy from strangers. I don't know how many times I have to... <laughs> how many times do I have to tell you that, Bob? You of all people should know that. You ever get that sinking feeling, Bob? Is it better to play Bishop G7 first? Bishop G7, King G7, Knight E4, Queen B6 check. This is very important that I play this move first. Because if I play the other move order, I don't win a piece. But here I do win a piece. This lesson, kids, is about calculation. Calculation is one of the most important things in chess. Don't forget to calculate all the way through the line. And never never take candy from strangers. And never believe your opponent, no matter what you do. So Bob learned the hard way. I know it's mean and kind of sadistic to like intentionally try to trick people into dropping pieces and pawns. That's my job. I'm a kid. That's my job. All right. Clutch your camel and, and wish for luck. Clutching this camel. Good cagey move from Bob. He's not going down without a fight. Or is he? Sorry, camel. Okay, so bishop g2, bishop f8, bishop f1, bishop e5, and then we have like d6. And we're clearly, clearly winning here. 
The maximum Bob is going to get is like two, two pawns for a piece. The Bobster. It's my job. I'm an entertainer. My job is to trick you guys. I've got to get all the advantages I can. I guess I could have tried like bishop e5, d6, king g2. Let him take on e5, but opening up the f file there. Felt like my king would be more open if I let the f pawn get traded. Thank you for being a good assistant here, Bob. A volunteer for this experiment in the Accelerated Dragon. Spassky esque centralization of the queen. Do we use the F pawn as a battering ram? All right. Now, F6 is probably a good move. And if it have asked why not bishop be 5 well, um, I discussed that. D6. King G2, DE, FE, and I felt my king would be more open ultimately without the F pawn on the board. That was my judgment. I may or may not be right there in Efidov. It was definitely a judgment call. I certainly considered it. I mean, two pawns for a piece is like in the hands of a master normally decisive, but. In a practical game, things are not always so easy. Stay away from the chalupas. I don't know why I went there. <laughs> I guess it keeps him off of F3 just in case. Bob, was it you who said you beat a 2100 today? Pretty tough. H5 coming to me to get me. Not easy for Bob to get in. Slowly my extra piece will make its present felt. Presence felt. My rooks must filter, filter through. Maybe the G file looks pretty juicy now. G is for juicy. Nefedov, you're showing your materialistic side. So bishop e5, d6, bishop d6. Argumentative, Nefedov. Bishop b5, d6, bishop d6. Well, actually, I had a problem with queen b6 check there, Nefedov. And then uh, I lose the rook on f1. So that's probably a, not a good line. I really did look at it. I didn't say the moves, you know, in depth. But I did take a glance at it. That was like the first line I calculated. Always, yeah, I agree. Start dancing. <clears throat> Well, I'd be, ser I'd be scared if Why So Serious starts dancing, too. But he doesn't get, like, an exercise ball. Like Joanna. I don't really want to see a guy doing that. Anyway, that's just me. You know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, Alright, increase the pressure. Thinking about the G file, but we have to keep that queen off of F3. No, no enter, entering into my position, sir. All right, you're right, you're right, Nefid, I'm sorry. Yes, bishop d6 is possible. Maybe I was looking at a different move, like queen b7. It is possible you're, you're actually correct. You might be able to win another pawn there. Win a pawn. All right, Bob gave up. Nefidov won, won the post-mortem analysis. 
I don't know who this player is, Cinderella Complex. <laughs> I'm not going to play a totally new account. All right, I have a 100 game minimum. Generally, I like people to have 100 games. I don't play new, fresh new accounts. So I just so want to avoid getting trolled. Um, let's see if, if Nefidov was right about his little argumentative analysis variation. Bishop takes g2. This was the last line we looked at, queen b7. So technically I could have played this, but I'm not sure this appeals to me any more than the game, to be frank. So nothing convincing there. Definitely playable, um, but not necessarily better than what I did. Winning is winning. Merle Dixon, thank you for the 100 bits. Valiant effort by Bob with an interesting opening actually. The computer thought you were slightly better, Bob, when you fell for the trap. What's this about a6? Man, f3 is just lame for white. a6, rarely played move, the Bob variation. I mean, f3, okay. You know what, I could play, I could play it like a normal dragon. That's the thing, I guess. For some reason, f3 doesn't have a great score here. Most accelerated dragon dragon players wouldn't let white get into a normal dragon, I guess, with f3 and queen d2. Wei Yi against Shankland. All right. Arsenal fan Richie, uh-oh. He's up to 1949 now. Yesterday I got the beating. I'm a little scared now. Merle again, thank you for the donation. Jim this week with 300, Merle with 201, Delacorta 150, Dragon BC with 100, Mr. Coffee with 50. Guys, keep the bit donations coming. Let's get a streaming donation this week. Um, you can click on the Ponda GIF on my Twitch page and donate for a streaming donation like the others you see on the screen. If R smashes me today, we're gonna send his computer assistance report in. <laughs> I don't care if he's guilty or not. He's not allowed to beat me twice in a row. Unusual openings. Oh crap, I forgot. A3. Nobody said anything the first game, or at least I missed it. A3. All right, this is a little unusual. The A3 English. It's kind of like I played A3 on the first move. Now it's, now it's gonna be a full-on Polish opening, where a3 is really not absolutely necessary. Anita, hola. Are you the real Anita? You're a subscriber. Oh, that's weird. All right. Anita, one month subscriber. I just realized something weird. Okay, never mind. Difficult to explain. I'm not gonna explain it. The dark square is young. Well, it's a little early to be celebrating. <laughs> a little early to be celebrating the dark square victory here. Bolagon. Actually, Anito likes this. Anito likes this uh, knight c6, d6. But she wouldn't fee in Keto. She did bishop e7. I call it the Ferenc Frank, the Ferenc Frank system. Well, it's like a King's Indian where Black played e6 for no reason. It's probably not that bad. All right, what are we gonna do? I could fee in Keto, of course. Which game should you submit for analysis? Says Bob. Bob's asking for input. All right, so d5. Want to keep the tension where possible. <sighs> uh. 
The problem if I play d3, he can take and create this like boring symmetrical structure. I don't really like to allow that. Fuchsia's here. Uber driver. Uber driver and Merle on the same stream. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Thank you guys for hanging out with me on this weird Wednesday. Kind of forgot to play the weird opening in game one against Bob. Hang hang my head in shame. Nobody reminded me. I need reminding. It's hump day. Don't forget. Jim played an awesome game today against Rochade Augsburg. Rochade Augsburg. Jim, it's not Jim's first awesome game. Another one for the collection. Wow, Concordians, here for a weird Wednesday drive by. Long time no see. Concordians, drive by. Weird Wednesday. Man, I've been, I've been getting all kinds of calls. Today was like the record. I mean, or Amy. Basically, I think they're mostly for Amy. Um, an unreal amount of robocalls. Like 10. I had like 10 robocalls today. I think that's the all-time record. I mean, sometimes we will get like 5 or 6. But I think by 10 a.m. I had already had 5. I bought some tickets on Ticketmaster online and I put my phone number on there and then suspiciously like within the next two hours I got like five robocalls. I mean I'm probably paranoid as usual but it seems like a company like a big company like Bro oh, Ticketmaster would, would like easily get their their phone list hacked by hackers or something. Anyway, I just basically don't answer my phone anymore. If you if you don't leave a message, you don't get you don't get answered. C six. All right. He believes in white square pawns. Cannot argue with that. He believes. This is like Tension City. Arsenal, is your friend over today? The nineteen hundred. I mean the, the 190, 1900. The 190 friend. Played yesterday. <laughs> Give me another couple of weeks and getting back in the flow. I've eked out a 1200 rating. Good job. So you've, you've gone up like 100 points. Concordians. Getting weirder by the minute here. Doesn't seem to be a lot of rhyme or reason. Some of Black's pieces, but nevertheless, no really major problems except for perhaps this. The backwardness of the C pawn on C6. I'm hoping that costs him like a Catalan. Knight to d5. Okay, a lot of pressure on the on the b4 pawn obviously. I can take that and I could try to take it and play like knight e4. I feel like that would be better for white. It's one of many possibilities here. I have the central pawn. I mean, that should entitle me to an advantage. Do I go knight e4 or do I do something like rook c1 and try to, say, increase my development? Even knight e5 is possible. The knight on a6, though. I 
Am I gonna help it though? I think I'm getting Ticketmaster ads now on my phone. It's bad. I'm just gonna turn over the phone. I don't want to see it when it like is a notification or something. It's too distracting. I'm trying to avoid exchanges here. Rook d8. I don't like it when my opponent plays moves I don't understand. And that's one of those such moves. Such a move in other grammatically correct context. Um, the only problem with Black's position really is the backward pawn on C, C6, which is related to my strong pawn on D4 in a way. I like Black's piece activity. This one on B7 is kind of hemmed in. Knight on A6, not that good. The other pieces are well placed. I can't imagine he can take on E5. There's no way he can do that. I mean, that bishop is just too important. We could come back here with Knight D3 and get a complete monstrous control of c5. Notice that c5 drops his b5 pawn. But other than that, I could just take on c5 as well. That's probably even stronger. All right, I have no issue with, with trading queens in this position. I think it slightly devalues his structure. The a4 pawn is, is very weak. If I play rook c4, he has knight b6. He's hanging on. We will drive it back to a kind of passive square, though. I thought just rook c2. Slight advantage to white. But our little fan is getting stronger and stronger. 1949 and rapid, very impressive. Just a matter till you're 2000, just a matter of time. Have you crossed 2000? Yesterday's game was very impressive. Trading queens to lose. Well, it's not that bad for black. I mean, I don't think that he's completely, clearly lost. E4 is not protected. But if you play C5, I just take. Plays it anyway. Man, I think he might have had bishop e4 there. If that's the case, I could have been in real trouble. But I think we've got him now. Clear pawn up, second pawn hanging on a4. In the game on the game. He's on his game.
How is it possible that Nakamura runs down IMs and GMs and Blitz all day? I, I don't know. He wants to make money. It seems like he's really into the Twitch streaming now. Personally, you know, I, I think he should probably focus on playing chess. He's got a lot of talent, and, um... The dude just played knight b6, right? Putting his bishop on prees. That's an insane move. Yesterday's performance, when he was down a pawn in increment, was insane. He's 33. <laughs> Man, that's terrible. Finished in what respect, though? To be number one in the world? I mean, Arsenal's coming up with some precarious moves and time pressure here. Knight b6, hanging the knight, then rook d5, and rook in the middle of the board. Wow. He's pure tactics. Tightrope, yeah, tightrope walker, no doubt. He actually lost on time. Damn. Look at this position where he like calmly plays knight b6. I wouldn't play that move like on principle. It's like unbelievable. Voluntarily putting your knight on pre's. But I was too scared to take it. Or even push. I guess pushing would have been alright. But my rook's not protected, so... I kind of gave him credit for that. Earl Dixon, nice game, Arsenal fan. It was certainly crazy. All right. We've got a challenge here from Take Back. Skrilla? Skrill, 2.5 bucks per subs. Yeah, basically, they take half. G spites. Weird openings. Plus nice donations. Think had a lost position early. Um no, I don't think so. Why do you think you had a lost position? The acerbate defense. B six. Owen defense. Thanks guys for subscribing. Don't forget you can make donations via PayPal or bits here. Like Merle Dixon just did. Earl Dixon took the lead with 301. Jim with 300. Delacorta 150. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. Infinite Flash Chess, is he in the house? What What brought that on, Bob? Now you got an interesting play there, Arsenal, with, with A5. And um, I thought you had a better way to play. Like, when you played Knight to D5, I was scared you could take on b4 and play like bishop f8 and just target my my b4 pawn. You might have even you might have even been able to force me to literally play. I know bishop f8 feels passive for you, but you could force me to play like knight a2 or something really strange. So, Jim, thanks for the donation, sir. You thought of him because I'm having Indian food for dinner. All right, as long as you're not eating Indians for dinner, you're not a cannibal, right? We know you're weird. Indian food is okay. Don't know where that came from, but... I was kind of wondering what happened to... We haven't seen Infinite Flash today, so I'm kind of concerned. Um, 
Bob's historical knowledge coming out now. Bishop e3. Don't see this too often. What's the reputation? What do we do? Play like a weird French now? I feel like there's something better. C5, maybe. C5 with a bizarre Sicilian. C5, acerbate, any recommendations? I don't play the French, damn it. But I'm supposed to be playing weird openings. So anyway, we'll get in the spirit of things. Alright, we're in the spirit of weird openings. I do not play the French usually. I should play a French just for fun. That's not a weird opening at all. In fact, it's like one of the most common openings against e4, but... I think for me, French defense would actually qualify. It's probably the opening I play the least of all time. I play Al Yekin all the time. So it's almost like a normal opening for me. So it's not really a good choice. Now it looks like a Rubenstein French. Okay, so take, take, take. Take, 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 check, and take. It's like um, a gambit. It is a gambit. A very dangerous gambit. Do I play against the French? I play different things. I play either either the the white side of knight c3 or knight d2, either of the main lines against the French. I try to be versatile, but I've never played um I've never played the Tarash in a tournament game. In tournament play, the few Frenches that I've played, because I'm not a native e4 player. Um, I have played knight c3. So it basically turns into a gambit. It's like he did it on purpose. Some sort of like super genius or something. Like nobody plays that gambit on purpose like ahead of time take back this is a little scary for black pay attention Arsenal you 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 know you're good tactically that's your specialty Arsenal you're a French player or at least you used to be you should see that C5, theoretically, if I wasn't drastically behind in development here. Down, Bob. Down. Down, Bob. Easy, Bob. Don't have to assault the every new player but we're very suspicious of the you know the accounts with the two words and and numbers at the end kind of like bob sakamano 27 that's dubious uber driver 68 that's dubious human man 34 that's dubious what's up anita I guess all the normal names are taken, so you just have to take names with numbers at the end now. So the trolls are more likely to grab those when they created their 20th account. He was already like Human Man 1. <laughs> human Man, the Human Man 1, Human Man 2, Human Man 3, Human Man 34. This is his 34th account. I guess that's why Bob was suspicious. Spites is safe. There are other drivers, yeah, other Uber drivers. I miss Blobix too. Someone ought to send him a message of apology. You sent him an a message of apology, Anita? You 
told him to come back. I felt kind of awkward about it. You know, I don't want to, you know, hold people's hands and stuff. I mean, I said vocally on the stream that I'd like him to come back, but maybe he's not watching the stream after what Bob said to him. I could send him a message, but we're not going to focus on that. You know, hopefully he'll come back of his own accord. Um, I think it was a little overdone. Like... Really, he seemed fine. Bob made one comment. Now he's leaving the stream forever. I think it's too much. So hopefully he'll just get over it. But I don't... Don't want to see other people insulting... You guys insulting each other? Under any circumstances? This is Weird Wednesday. So I'm trying to play unusual openings. It's hard for Bob to be nice when he gets jealous. Bob has very strong feelings for me, you know, so when the other players are friendly toward me, I think it it brings out this sort of animal jealousy. Um, man, this is getting scarier and scarier. I just realized he has knight c6, which was kind of the, the point. Queen d5, maybe? You know, Uber Driver, Rook c8 was a good move. You must be a Rubenstein French player. This didn't occur to me, but that's a decent idea. My move is much less developmental and much more dangerous. Another common Rubenstein French move, but... Pretty scary loss of time. I mean, I was going to come back to b7. It's only a matter of time till Bob gets banned by me. Bob has already been banned by me, like, numerous times. Nefidov. He was banned last week. And he's constantly getting chat, you know, timed out. We'll time him out till he chills out a little bit right now. Just for example. Um, he's got a 10 minute timeout. Bye Bob, see you later. Okay, Queen E4. This is probably a good move. Ancient Gamer, we've seen you before. Nefidov, you have personal grudge against Bob, too. I'd rather see everybody get along, including Nefidov. Let's get back to chess. Rook f4, good, good suggestion. Drama spices things up. It does, sometimes. That's why I keep Bob around. I mean, he makes it interesting. But, you know, we've got to, like, keep him under control. It's like babysitting. Knight e4. Yeah, that's a good move. I'm actually looking at knight e4. He's basically not that bad, and people are, you know, I think over, like, totally out of control over, over stress the Bob thing. He's really not that bad of a troll. I take 10 Bobs over some of the other nasty trolls we've had. All right, um, man, I've got to do something fast here. What am I doing? Permanent trolling. <laughs> I've had some of that lately. Oh my god.
What a move. Wait, you dropped a rook. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I totally didn't see it. Too much chatting about this stupid troll stuff. Alright, can we please just focus on chess? Rook. Rook d2. I take backs incredibly fast sometimes. What's he got the, the play ratings? Trying to have all of his ratings the same or whatever? That's really weird. Oh, I resigned before I could mate him. That sucks. Alright guys, let's focus on chess. Para Ode's here. 22-35. Para Ode. Otherwise known as um, Ananas. The artist formerly known as Ananas. Merle Dixon thanks for the donation. Good game take back. Merle Dixon takes the lead with 401 bits. Jim also donated up to 400. So thank you guys. I didn't catch the Jim donation. Did anyone donate because I timed out Bob? I can ban Bob for, for money too. You can pay to have Bob banned from individual. <laughs> I will if you tell me how. We can pay to have him banned from individual streams. Then he'll start like blackmailing me or something. All right. Unusual openings. Mr. Coffee's here. Okay, I never play B3. Parody is a Fianchetto guy with white. So, you think, okay, maybe he plays like the King's Indian with black, actually. The Nimzo Larson is in a bad opening. Yeah, you have to see C5. Pavel Blatny played F4 against me, and that didn't go well for him. In that position. I think F4 is more appropriate once black has played C5. Jim's like B3, question, question. Mr. Coffee Brand. Well, to be honest with the Arsenal fan, um, I'm a player who started you know, at a fairly early age, but not too early. I was like 11. And I think that my improvement was extremely systematic and extremely gradual. I mean, I can distinctly remember being like 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500, etc. All the way up till, till almost 2,500 FIDE and over 2,500 US. And if you looked at a graph of my ratings, it was really, really gradual. Um, so it's kind of a tough question to answer when improvement in my game is the most significant increase in strength. I, I just don't know. I mean, I have to attribute it to like playing a lot regularly combined with study. I can't really pinpoint a specific, you know, that's hard, dude, to try to pinpoint a specific thing like that. Maybe like pawn structure, understanding pawn structure. Pawn play in chess, one of the more important things. I know that's we really, really asking about like specific concepts. Um, F6 so aggressive here with black. Wow. It's like an English defense with colors reversed. Let's go for it. My style did not change suddenly at certain points. Um, I was very, very optimistic and, and psycho-aggressive when I was, up until I was a master. Once I became a master, you know, like a national master, I think I started to chill out a little bit, you know? I became, like, the stronger and stronger players I played, I became a little less optimistic, a little less over-optimistic, over and maybe in some cases too conservative toward the end. Right, Fuchsia? 
the stronger players you play, you know, the more fearful and kind of passive and afraid you're going to play. Take care, Nefedov. Thanks for joining us. I'm not sure about Queenie 2. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks, Mr. Coffee, for checking out a modern day floor. Modern day floor. I was much more wild when I was, say, like 22, 2300. I would play really psycho, crazy games that I probably would, like, just freak out if I had to see I did that. Now, I did things like I would never consider now. Okay. E6, solid move. What are we going to do, kids? Fighting for control of the center. Playing Blitz when classical, you mean? Well, it's interesting, Uber Driver, that I never played a lot of classical openings. That's something kind of distinctive. This isn't the case with, with everyone, obviously. This is kind of a weird position now. He takes on c4, if I do that. Para Ode, 2235. Lagging in development, but he's got a very strong unopposed white squared bishop now. He's still threatening that. Taking on taking on c4. I mean, playing the f3 Nimzo with the black pieces, it's pretty crazy, dude. It's risky enough with white. You learn the nuances of high quality play from Arnie Dubow in Harvard Square. Is that some sort of joke, Uber Driver? Is Arnie Dubow still alive? Yes, he's still alive, or yes, it's a joke, or yes, both. I would have no idea. The one thing I, I, I appreciate about Arnie Dubow was that he he understood that the reverse Grunfeld was a good opening for white. I got to give him credit for that. Um, here I am playing the reverse Grunfeld. A lot. E4. E4. Bishop F4. E4, D takes C4. This could get like super weird. E4 doesn't look right. What does look right? Heck. What am I going to do? E4? Am I seriously going to do E4? What am I thinking there? I'm like out of my mind. E4, D4, <laughs> Knight D5, E5, D5, E5. I'm seriously considering doing that? That's like absurd. Man, this is a nice game by Black. Bob's back. He feels better now. It's like after he had his medicine. It's like the patients in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. After medicine, t medicine time. So much more peaceful now. I don't like this at all for me, you know? He's got that rapid rating way up to 2235. 
1600 in bullet? What? That's ridiculous. You know what, Arsenal fan? I, I didn't consider Knight G6, but you're absolutely right. I mean, Knight G6, Knight G6 would be bad for me. The H file would be good. The psychologist, Astrobait. So, you're trying to give Fuchsia a sub, but it's, it's disable. Disable. It's the opposite of chessable. Disable. Parode is considering the ramifications of d4, no doubt. I mean, if he does go castle's queenside, I can play queen g4, and these two pawns are attacked. I mean, I don't know if, if he can give up sack a pawn here or not. Note the knight on h4 is defending my g2. It's a warrior. Trojan knight. Parody only lets his little brother play in the bullet account. Okay, so now he's looking for little tactics, cute little tactics against my queen, like take, take, you know, move the knight in e3 check, sorry, d3 check. But I don't have to take, you know. We don't have to take. Oh, we don't have to take. Classic Rubensteinian retreat, knight d1. Hypermodern chess, luring him forward. Which is a dynamic move, d4. <laughs> we get a lot of criticism from some. Oh, e6 is just dropping. You can sack it like that? Wow, that's a juicy pawn. Hmm. I can't believe it. On the other hand, I opened the position for his two bishops. You know, would Nimzovich take that pawn? Man, it's kind of hard to resist. It's like a central pawn. He's going to get some raging pressure. I could just ignore it and play d3. Pawn is kind of a pain to protect for black. I'm going to be practical here and deny that application for for a pawn. Queen e6 check, bishop d7, queen e4. I felt this position would be easier to handle. Now I'm having my doubts. Oh man, I was more afraid of bishop takes there. <laughs> There's a bug on my neck. He said felt like it. I can't see. Uh oh, it's getting scary. It looks like one of Yabatis' games. The GMF repeat. Greetings from Germany. Our opponent is also from Germany. Man, this is getting a little bit ugly. I think I gave him too much. I should have taken the pawn. You can't be... Don't make jokes. You'd be like Faulty Towers or something, Bob. Don't make jokes about the war <laughs> with the Germans. Um, all right, knight f3, this is, um, bishop c1, getting a little passive for white. Yeah, knight d2, knight d4, sure, if I had, like, all the time in the world. Anyway, you guys are wondering why I didn't take the pawn on e6 before? Um, I mean, I think that that was a theme in a, in a Nimzovich game where he played against the two bishops. If you, if you take such pawns... Sometimes it backfires, and I also um, I also think that you know it would be more difficult to play where I'm at a disadvantage time wise if I took the if I took the pawn. Jim actually gifted a, a tier one sub to Fuchsia, 
And he's given nine gift subs in the channel. Nice, get, nice job, Jim. Nine gift subs. Now Fuchsia can save her money for martinis. More important things in life. Do you want to learn something? Now is your chance. Uh-oh. Now I'm scared. 94, just lock it down. I am locking this down. Again, refusing to win material. He wants to open those two bishops. I'm going to kill these bishops as best I can. Keep them. Keep them under control. Now we're better. <laughs> Uh-oh. I bought circus tickets today to the Cirque du Soleil. So your donations will go to a good cause. Knight FG5, Bishop E4, Queen E4. Womaka, Matthias Womaka. Grandmaster. Black gave up the boss. Yeah, the white square bishop is boss. The boss piece. Now he's just going... Going under. He was clearly better. I had a, a similar game to this against a very young Josh Friedel. Who would become a Grandmaster later. My first ever game with... With, who is now Josh Friedel, the Grandmaster, when he was about 20, 2100, we had a game, it was actually, ironically, um, <laughs> ironically, I think it was actually a B3, and it became um, a Nimzo Larson. The same thing happened against Josh. That white square bishop got to be very, very strong, and it's a BOGO Nimzo theme. Um, I think in this case, you'll see, if you analyze the game, that parody was probably better. But if you just want to pick a random position, let's say around move, I don't know, maybe move 14. Okay, let's see this pawn grab. So check out the evaluation. Okay, maybe the computer would have grabbed the pawn. But it, it appreciates that black is better here, which I think that a lot of people wouldn't appreciate. Queenie six check negative 1.4. And I'm pretty aware of that. He must have had a very strong move after d3. That, um. Wow, the Arsenal fan rich move. Knight g6 now. An improved Arsenal fan rich variation. Nice job. So it was well played out of the opening by Black. Very aggressive, um. F6 with the black pieces. Interesting stuff. Lucky as usual. Save a dog is a subscriber. Nicolas, have we played before? Mm, yeah. And then, okay, some new guys. F6 was a mouse slip, are you serious? Well, I mean, you know, the F3 Nimzo is fine, so I don't see why it's not playable. better I get, the luckier I am. <laughs> um, good one. I like that Arsenal fan. It's the Potsers who are unlucky. It's not the Masters who are lucky. Okay, save a dog. Waiting on him. Queen d3 is a good opening. What do you call d4, d5, queen d3? We'll have to ask our resident weird openings name expert, the Fuchsia. Now a subscriber to my stream. And a great helper here on Lee Chess. Alright, Save a Dog seems to be out. Maybe he's just thinking about his first move. I don't know. I think he might be out to lunch. So that's a Capablanca quote. Mr. Coffee busting the Capablanca quotes. 
Guys, don't forget to support the stream and check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. You can like that. Just like and subscribe on YouTube. Time for more coffee. The Uber driver. I like I like Queen D3 against the Dutch. D4, F5, Queen D3. Remember this Delaware master, Paul Powell. He's still around somewhere. I saw him on Facebook. 2200. I remember watching him play Queen D3 at a Delaware Valley area tournament. That was that's a move you can kind of connect to the Korchnoi type of thing. Alright, Save a Dog is not here. We're gonna abandon this game. And go on to the next one, Nicolas. Nicolas. So we're we've gone through the subscribers pretty quickly like butter. Actually, not that many subscriber challenges, guys. Get in there and, and challenge. What are you guys doing, Mr. Coffee? Let's get a Mr. Coffee game. He's shy. Shy to play. So you don't think he played that literally? I mean, he said that literally. All right, E4. Peer pressure. E4, E5. What don't I play? The Latvian? Latvian's a bit much. We could play the Fuchsia Gambit, Bishop C5. She did a study on this. <laughs> I mean, man, that's some weird stuff. I know what I'll do. Weird. Please play Knight takes E5. The Elephant Gambit, Mark Hebden's favorite. Hebby likes to play that in Blitz, but this is the um, the Afro Maya of defense. No, not her tan's opening. This is not the same. No, her tan plays, you know, d6, knight f3. How is it? d6, knight f3, knight takes e4. Oh, knight takes e4 right away. Okay, but this is the Afro Maya. This is an improvement. This was discovered in the 2000s by by Fritz, chess assistant analysts, together working day and night with, with Fide Master Afromeyev, realized that Fritz, without its opening book, found the proper way to play the black side of the Petrov. Open Rui, well, Open Rui is um, standard open opening. Not for me, but no one lets me play like when I try to play the Royal Lopez. Anyway, lets me play anything normal. <sighs> okay, so when you play the Aframeo defense, he didn't play d4, which is the critical move. Um, that's the, the one move that's really key. Then you play knight c6, and if they take on c6, you play queen takes the e4 check. Um, so what does this all mean? Knight takes e4, bishop e2, g6, castles, bishop g7, rook e1, castles, and then I'm in some kind of eternal pin. We can play queen takes, check, and then like just develop more efficiently. Queen e4, check, bishop e2, bishop e7, knight c3, no good place to put the queen. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. I think you have to put it on some really effed up square like queen c6. It's not that bad. It's better than bishop c5. Afromeyev plays it. Knight takes e4. If we take with a knight or take with the queen. Arsenal fans suggesting knight c6 is an interesting idea, but after knight c6, I don't think that solves our problem. <laughs> what if he just did like bishop e2 or something? We're neglecting our king side development with knight c6. I have to confess, I haven't ever really studied this. You know, I've played it, like, jokingly in Blitz a couple times. Maybe I'm supposed to actually play d5 and bishop e6. d5 castles, bishop e6. Rook e1. Knight c6. d3, knight f6. Let's try it. 
I'm afraid I'm going to get wrecked here. Oh, Uber driver suggested queen d8. That's actually not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Knight takes f2. It's, it's not crazy house. A great crazy house move from Fuchs. You can try that on a Joanna Tria stream or something. <laughs> I haven't played Crazy House in like years. But um life is too short. So I like Uber Driver's suggestion of Queen D eight though. All business. You probably like the Queen D eight Scandinavian. So I thought I'm supposed to play supposed to play like as in I saw this in some game. Bishop E six. The knight could even retreat potentially to, to d6. It's still not too late for queen d8. And that, I didn't mean to rhyme or like rap or anything. Queen d8, rookie one, bishop b7. Queen d8, rookie one, bishop b7, d3, knight f6. Just like a passive position, man. Uber driver, how did you talk me into this? Oh, you were watching the, the Crazy House World Championship today. No wonder. Knight d6. I'm afraid this could be prone to being attacked by c4. It's like an exchange French now. We've almost equalized. This is a position only Nefidov could love. He's not here to love it. Loving it. D4 stopping knight c5 with absolute symmetry. Frank Marshall, knight e4. Unnecessary risk. My friend Zlatko Ilinchic, grandmaster from Serbia, he had this Petrov system. One day he just woke up and he decided to stop playing the night or if he had had enough beatings from children. So he just started this decision to just play the Petrov like from now on. He went from the Nidorf to the Petrov, like, overnight. And um, it was kind of funny, but... So he just was like, all right, I'm going to play solid. And then when people would play the Nimzovich variation against him, he created the system, basically, where instead of exchanging knights on c3, he would just, like, retreat it back to f6. Nobody had ever done that, but it's actually not that bad. Um... Man, this guy's just too solid. He's killing me. This guy loves this position. I mean, seriously. He's loving playing the white side of the exchange French. He probably plays the exchange French. For real. <sighs> Man, alright. I can't take it anymore. That's it. Pawn structure, pawn structure Nazis are going to be out in full force when I played c5, but this is taking a stand. We're taking a stand for dynamics. I'm showing I'm not a one-dimensional player. I can't, you know, <laughs> I can't sit there and just be passive for too long. It's like a Tarash French now. C5 is, is a reasonable move in these exchange French positions, Mr. Coffee. This seems like a very reasonable Tarish French at this juncture. Juncture. Mr. Coffee agreed. But this guy is really solid, man. Come on now. I feel like I'm playing Korchnoi. No, actually, I'm Korchnoi and he's Karpov. Karpov Korchnoi, Maskar and Murano. 
1978. Not boating well for me. So we started with a Petrov, then it became the Exchange French, and now it's a French Tarash. How the opening has morphed. What's up, guys? Get a little bit of everything here. Humor. Charming host. Modest. Charming. Little chess history. Inferences. HTFP, it's okay. Things happen. Your cat had to go for a walk. I fully understand. Dynamic Dodger. Man, weight is solid. Now, this move was a surprise. Whoa. He goes in HE3. He's not concerned about that change in the pawn structure. Interesting. Wow. All right. Well, I kind of agree with him is that it's okay, but it's also. It's also, uh, why did I just retrieve my bishop unprovoked there? I don't know why I just auto-retreated. I mean, obviously there are tactics with h7, but... Okay, I mean, I think I understand why. I mean, deep inside, I, I have a feel about this e4 square. I love you, e4 square. Look at this guy with the g4. Okay, it's a natural move in a tactical sense, but at the same time, it's like kind of brilliant because he basically undermines my knight in a way by disallowing f5. Who was it that said bishop d6 was the right square for the bishop? 10 points. This guy is impressive, though. I mean, really solid. 2016, based on 26 games. I played him twice before. I remember he was pretty good the first games. Look at this. Preempting me. First he preempted me with the G4, and now he has this 92. Oh, man. All right, we got to go for it here. Gotta go for it. There's never any tactics. He's like freaking Karpov. He is Karpov. Try to flush him out somehow. There's no way to do it. And this is really irritating. Wow. Damn, dude. You can only hope he makes mistakes in the end game. Rook CA force is an instant trade. I did catch that. Rook E2 calmly. He has three minutes more than me now. My god, man. Wow. You might have missed something. You're not the only one. But none of those mating attacks like worked if I try to play queen h4.
I mean, how strong is this guy? Making me grovel for a draw. I mean, at least time-wise, he's up three minutes on the clock. Wow, that is impressive. Still attacking. Man, white was better like the whole game from start to finish. Check this out. I don't think I was ever better, like even at one moment. Beginning to end. So even Tim Afeyev has played this. But actually Uber Driver is right. Queen d8 is the correct move. I saw this knight c6 game. But that's played by some some nobodies. The correct move according to Timofeyev, Queen D eight. Check him out, he's he's really got a good sent upon loss in this game. I'm just gonna go through quick. It's kinda boring, but I wanna see if I ever even had a slight advantage at any point. Apparently this is very risky. Nice game by white. G4, well, what else? So here, like, it looks like, okay, I could try something aggressive, like queen h4, lose a pawn. Easy to get good CPL in these positions, though. Yeah, I mean, both sides. I had a 13 cent upon loss, even though he had a huge advantage. How did I have 13 cent upon loss? He had, like, plus 1.3, plus 1, plus 1.2. I have 13 cent upon loss. He has 14 cent upon loss. <coughs> Extremely strong game by White. Mr. Coffee and Save a Dog. There began to be tactics, though. Arsenal, once I played C5, you know, the game opened up. So it wasn't like a really conventional exchange variation after that. There were some dynamics going on there. I was very close to losing a pawn, you know, with the IQP and the, the overextended E4 pawn. All right. Anyway, it was fun. He could try stuff. He was cautious. Coffee plays the Karo Khan. What? All right, I can't play. I'm sorry, Fuksha. I can't play the Panov. We've got to play something interesting. What do we do against the Karo Khan? Anything interesting? Bishop c4. <laughs> Mr. Somewhat Sound is here. Um, b3 against the Karakhan. What is that? The Labats? The Laban attack. Alright, so basically we're going to try to play a kind of... Um, a kind of Gambito here. Jim's like, yay, our second B3 today. Do you play B3 against the Karo Khan? It's a Budapest reversed. Yeah. It's kind of like that. A Soltigo position. B3 is the Uva attack. What is this gambit? Must have a name. If not, we've got to give it a name. Yeah, this is a, a Yababa. The Yababa attack. Yababa can probably reach this position by like five different move orders. B3 on move one, B3 on move two, B3 on move three, B3 on move four. 
Like B3 on move 5. Pretty much 5 different move orders to reach this. Different forms of the Ababa. All you have to do is like, you know, do those moves in one order or another. Okay, you guys peer pressured Mr. Coffee. He's tired from work, you know. So he's not to be held responsible for his result here. If it doesn't go well. Okay, knight f6, queen e2. That looks normal, though you could play f3 just flat out, you know, like a straight up, whatever you call it. Also, knight e2, knight g3 doesn't seem that bad. But queen e2 prepares development. If bishop g4, we sack a pawn for f3 with f3. f3 is begging to be played. Doesn't need a name. You love giving names. Of course it needs a name. Slaggy Gambit. No, it must have a name, Fuxia, surely. This position has a name. F3. It's uh, our Gambiteer, Mr. Summon on Sound, trying to do the Smith Mora on the other side of the board. Speaking of which, Summon on Sound, did you ever try to play the, the Black Mar Deemer? That seems like it would be up, up your alley. I mean, the key here is that black can't, you know, easily get a knight to d4. The same idea against the French, exactly. Oh, I dropped my c2 pawn. It's so stupid, I can't believe it. Where's Bob? Bob, I dropped my C3, my C2 pawn again. <laughs> it's a good thing this isn't Bob's game. Common motif in the Scandinavian. Actually, you can sacrifice the C2 pawn sometimes in the Scandinavian. Mr. Coffee's too cautious. He would never dare take a pawn like that, even if it was free. He's he's a very very solid player. I mean, I'm not sure I would necessarily take it either, if it were free. But we've seen this theme today already. I'm trying to induce people into taking poison, poisoned apples. Bob fell for a hook, line, and sinker. I think that was the first game today. Welcome to the weird opening stream, guys. We're trying B3 against the Karo Khan here. Coffee takes. We take. We dropped our C2 pawn. I actually like knight a6 there, because he's got two two angles of approach with the knight. It would also disallow knight d4, but probably knight d7 is, is okay. Well, good good suggestion on the g3, someone on sound. I was looking to develop my pieces anyway. But I am down a pawn here, so we can't mess around too much. The moral of the story is that we might not have time for the niceties of something like g3, bishop g2, just eh, everything's cool. We gotta be a little bit more fast acting. The 96 mate, death wish variation. How am I gonna get there? Can't go here. Can't go here. I can't get there with the other knight. Yes, g6 could even be an option. You saw the, dis <laughs> the knight d6 mate. Yeah, that's a good line against the Karo Khan. You know, we do like queen e2 really early. Well, that's also, you know, also Budapest Gambit theme. Uber driver. Uber driver plays Fajarowitz. So it's kind of hard to do the. Isn't that a kind of disappointing feature of the Fajarowitz Uber driver? Like you can't do Smothered Mate because your knight's sitting on e4. Um, you, you don't have the normal knight d3 mate. 
with the knight on g4. I would think that would that would kind of be a turn off to playing the Fajarowitz. Mr. Coffee with queen c7 looks like he's possibly thinking about castling queenside. I keep wanting to play knight d4 and like let him go bishop g4. What do you do? I mean, come on, like, I mean, h3 is really lame for white here. That is so lame. Of course, they can play g4, but what if I did like rook g1 and then g4? Sacked in exchange or something. G1 is kind of weird. What do I do here? Queen c4, Arsenal fan. Focal point f7. Knight g5. Bishop g4, queen c4 is possible. You know, which raises an interesting question. But he has 95 there at the end of the day. Mr. Coffee. So disappointing, I don't know what to do. Rook E1. Disallowing that. Wow, nice suggestion from Uber Driver. Queen F2, kind of a weird move though. I want to develop my pieces, guys. Knight D4. Knight no, Knight G5 is not a developing move. H3 is so slow. Just doesn't seem right. Sidestepping bishop g4 exchange wins. I'm just not really tempted to push this d-pawn. I feel like it's part of my kingside protection. Protectionist economic policy. So we can play things like knight g5 and knight d4 now without dropping an exchange. Also controls a central square. It's probably not such a bad move. You think every position is rich, Arsenal fan. But it's not just about you. So knight d4, bishop g4. That was bad. Stupid. In fact, very bad. All right. Knight h4. Very bad dad jokes. Sorry. Couldn't resist. Coffee is preparing for development. Yeah, man, what do I do? Damn it. Knight d4 anyway? Now we're really just fishing. But maybe... Uber driver's idea of queen f2 could could be relevant somehow. Could get weird. Bishop g4, queen f2, bishop c5, knight a4, for example. We're obviously very close to a tactical breakthrough. Can't believe he, he can do that. I can't believe he, but he's got e8 double protected, so. I can't believe he. Man. Coffee doing a good job here. No, no 96 sacrifice, objectively sound there. Now he really needs to get out. I feel bad. Maybe I had to sacrifice it anyway. Just speculative. It would have been the best thing to do. Take on e6. Be sacking a piece for two pawns. It's actually a piece for one pawn though. Since I'm down a pawn. So. 
Yeah, bishop h3. Either of these diagonals could be something. At the end of the day, we're a pawn down. We don't really have anything great for it. Bishop g2. Love to get in a peace sacrifice on like c6 or b5 or something. Put the bishops on long diagonals and take things. This one's not, not really in business due to low flying knights. Thank you guys for joining me. Tomorrow is a subscriber stream. Don't forget. This guy is about to try to castle kingside. Take, take, take. Watch for low flying knights. Explosive sacrifices. Nothing clear here. Probably a good decision by by Coffee to castle kingside. Objectively. I don't know, but Fuchsia will probably make a comment about knight f8, man. That, that definitely, that's more passive than me. Even I wouldn't play that. Why doesn't he just castle? I mean, what am I threatening here? I think he should just castle. You know, these sacrifices are just vague and, and unclear. He should not be afraid of ghosts. Boo. Don't be afraid of ghosts, guys. I don't like that knight anymore. Wow. Knight on b4, dude. Mr. Coffee, step off with the knight on b4. Look at that. Control of e4. One, two, three pieces. Coffee didn't want to play, and he's playing well. We should force him to play more often. This is a tense game. Well, I mean, a5 could have been played at any point, Arsenal fan. That's certainly kind of standard idea. Now he castle king said he kind of faked me out. All right, I'm just about to lose on time. Making random moves now. Bishop g2, definitely not consequential. Can hold our breath and hope the tactical mistake comes by black, but he's played terrifically. Knight d3 check. Well, I just sort of did nothing. Well, that opens up another idea. A new idea. New ideas in chess. Sack my queen. How much should I get for the queen? Screw it. No time to sack my queen here. Weakening my dark squares. Big time. Now the H pawn. Mr. Coffee missed, um, he missed Queen A5 there, I thought. It better not work, man. He resigned, but I don't know why. Knight d3 check, king b1. Knight e5, queen e5. Queen d3 check, king a1. Bob certainly would have played it out, Mr. Coffee. You've got three pawns for a piece here. Let's see what's going on. Oh, you got the rook. What am I talking about? Okay. Duh. You got the rook. Oh, this is a mess, man. No, I don't know what's going on here. Mr. Coffee with a good game. 
Lost on time, unclear position. Yeah, I, I completely spaced. Completely spaced on that. Slightly better for black, according to the engine. Wow, nice job. That was a good game, man. Very good game, sir. Guys, we have like 45 minutes left in the stream. I'm going to play this Save a Dog game. He was disconnected, and he's a subscriber. Um, there was a lot to analyze there, Mr. Coffee. I'd like to look at that game like after the stream. Save a Dog. I mean, let's check the opening before we go on to the next game. So just some random Vietnamese guy I'd never heard of. Played it three times. Um, he drew Burkesh in 2013. Wow. Fatso must have been mad. Burkesh was 2702. Is that is that true? Wow, Burkesh was 2702. I didn't realize he went over 27. I beat Ferenc in my second tournament where I made an I am norm I remember catch commit 1990 1997 all right let's go on to the next game we've got Santiago no save a dog weird openings almost forgot play e5 against b3 not d5 both are possible I think mr. coffee's kind of getting used to the Karo Khan He's converting from, from what I remember, he played the French defense. So he's a French convert. It's hard for the, the French converts to play e5 psychologically. That's the problem. Okay. For Fuchsia, the Saragossa opening. C3. This doesn't have a lot of independent value, but it's fun. I played C3 a couple times. We could play the reverse. <laughs> the reverse, um, what's it called? Ah, forget it. Anyway, G4, Saragossa Gambit, F3, what do you call that? That's just weird. How do I not transpose to a normal opening like a squirrel? Form of a squirrel. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of angry with small animals for destroying my car. Squirrels included. There's acorns in my car engine and it cost me $300 to get the mice out of my air filter. Not really happy about that. Small animals. I think Jack Young called this the squirrel when you went like night A3 and night C2, but I'm, I, I don't remember now. Uber driver, do you remember anything about Jack Young and the squirrel? Are you, are you around? Are you old enough? Are you old enough? Jack Young, creator of Bozo's Chess Emporium. Basically, we'll just turn it into a reverse King's Indian. BG4. The Smyslov system reversed. Yeah, Jack Young, I guess, was kind of one of the pioneers in the hillbilly attack. But he had lots of weird openings. He he was a big contributor to the German opening, weird openings. Um, one of the main contributors to Link... What is it called? The Ranspringer. I want to say Link Springer. Ranspringer. I don't know if that's still in existence, but Jack was really into that. He was like a national master. Um, he was spotted recently. This like retired national master, Jack Young, who is a pioneer of weird openings here in New England. Save a dog doesn't play like a 1692. <laughs> I'm going to say this every time we play, but it's, it's really weird, dude. You're so good in the opening. Um, very correct. What do I even do here? This is already horrible for white. Use three seconds for the whole game. Can't really argue with that. When in doubt, trade pieces. When you're cramped, you should try to trade pieces. 
He's used three seconds. And he's 1692, 1657 in blitz. He has seven and a half points against me. Damn, dude. I hate White's position. But I have played like this in Blitz games. Usually with Black, I would do something like this. White Cabbage got me started on Knight A6. Uh, not in the King's Indian, but trying to do stuff like a really funky Knight A6. Not the mainline King's Indian classical with Knight A6, but other... One time White Cabbage, he beat me with this weird hybrid thing where he did like c6 and knight a6 just without even playing like for e5 I miss him he's a great player wojo alright so the playing for b4 look at this move perfect Discouraging White's play on the queen side does not make mistakes. Like groveling for a draw here. Can I, you know, e4 is like suicidal because of the weakness of d3. You don't feel like you're playing a 1600 against this guy. I feel like I'm playing like a master. Is it just me? I mean, he is not 1600. Um, A4, A5 is awful. Any kind of weakening moves just make my position worse. I'm like crying here. I would like instantly take a draw against anybody under, you know, anybody over 2200, probably. If I had this position in, I couldn't play this position. It's horrible for white. Spatially. But he shouldn't exchange pieces. Um, though I don't know what he's supposed to do. Maybe he can try like bishop f3, h5. Bishop f3, h5 is interesting. Usually he makes a mistake, maybe like in time pressure toward the end of the game. But, um... But the opening is excellent. White's position is clearly worse. The engine probably, if you ran chess... I'm sorry, um, I don't know what I'm talking about. If I ran, like, Stockfish, it would say, like, white is, at that point, probably plus one point something for black. I have so little space. It's that bad. Earlier, like, A4 was suggested. I think it's a little bit more realistic now. Wow. That's aggressive. Did not expect that one. H3. Wow. I mean, 1692, you have to put that in perspective. 1692 in Blitz. And he's like making me hang on by, by my fingernails after 18 moves. This is a horrible position for White yet. Even after I managed to exchange off one of the pieces there. <coughs> F4, 
a five natural move. It's a little committal, but I think it's still fine for black. It is kind of a Dutch defense. He started going like psycho aggressive, starting with like h5 and queen g6, but I don't think it's totally unprincipled. Black is still clearly better. And those are some tactics that I don't see. I would still think that black is clearly better. This piece is like perfectly placed, every single piece. He's got more space. And black is just better. If I could lock the position for my knights, I might be alright. Takeback says f4 with a killing attack. Um, well, I hope it's not killing, but it's an attack. But he's going to be wary of giving me counterplay along the e-file. It's, it's a little bit tricky in that respect. His queen is tied down to e6, so he can't, you know, drop uh, e6 with check in every variation and stuff. But I think now, if I can get my knight to g5, you know, I'm probably out of the woods. I can at least, like, lock it up. Lock it up with two knights against good bishop and knight, and maybe black. Look at this maneuver, knight g8. Very nice maneuver by black heading for f6 impressive where is my knight on c2 going wow I can't allow f4 I shouldn't allow f4 that's scary dude what a maneuver knight g8 I guess it didn't really have another good square, but man, black plays like a master. Okay, he doesn't have knight f6 right away. I give myself a knight e1 possibility. But this is a very unpleasant position for white. To the naked eye, you think, okay, it's blocked up, it's equal, but I think that black is better. The bishop is still a little better than the knight on c2. Black still has more space. Guys, 35 minutes left in the stream. Thanks to Merle Dixon, Jim Delacorda, and Dragon BC and Mr. Coffee for donating this week. Look at rookie eight. Great move. Trying to embarrass my, embarrass my queen, basically. Wow, dude. Extremely strong setup for black. Again, I can't get over his rating. There's no way he's 1600. I don't understand how you can be 1600. Positional pressure here, just massive against white. Black is, I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't agree, coward pawn. Black is not overextended here. Black has everything under control. He could overextend if he's not careful, but he hasn't crossed the line yet. Very solid for black. I'm in, I'm in trouble if I'm not careful here. He's a minute ahead. He's outplayed me completely from start to finish. If I play f4, he's demolishing me, like, immediately. Did I just lose a pawn now? Not quite, but close. Got to be tactically resourceful. A minute ahead. God. Whew. 
play is, is incredible for black. He's going to eventually force me to have to do something I don't want to do. I mean, very subtle. And maybe I can beat him on time, but... Strategically, I played me the whole game. Can I go F4 now? Probably my only hope. Try to lock it completely. If I could keep it locked completely, I can make a draw maybe. This is probably kind of a stupid move. I'm so intimidated, though, the way Black has played this game. I just don't get it. Okay, I need to maneuver my knight from, from E1 through F3. I mean, we have a chance to win on time. If he plays b5, it starts to open up. I mean, dude. It's like playing a fellow master. We've got a good opening. <laughs> It's really strong. What am I going to do now? 95 maybe? I mean, I can go here. I don't know if it's really a good idea or not. Maybe I can beat him on time somehow. From an equal or slightly worse position. If he plays b5, I have rook a6. Start to have threats. He dropped a pawn, not really. Now he has like F4 sacking a pawn, I've got to be super careful about that. I don't know how he's so good, I mean he's insanely good. I would take a draw here if he wasn't 1600. It's anybody who was like 2100, I would offer a draw. Alligator. Allegory. What are you just playing for help, mate? Of course. Allegorical. I mean, maybe I can win on time. If I can get in there, in it to win it.
I mean, I definitely don't deserve to win this game. I was clearly worse, like, the entire game. Until, like, ten moves ago. Or less. I mean, damn, dude. I guess till you get to about this point on the graph here, you'll see the you'll see the graph go up until here, right? Move thirty seven, it's still equal. Before that, I was I was done. Ronald Dixon, thank you. According to the engine, I'm still equal at move 25. I thought I was, like, clearly screwed. There you go. There's a point where you were winning. So I'd, he had e5 when I played queen e2. Kind of just owning the board spatially. I mean, it's not like a direct win, but he was better the whole way. And then I managed to equalize. And then finally, I started to... I started, but that's... It's a very good game by Black till the end. All right, that was unpleasant. That was a very unpleasant <laughs> experience for me. Five plus three. I will not play the squirrel opening again against anybody. Thank you, Merle Dixon. Six hundred and one this this week, and Jim with four hundred. All right, no more squirrel. We're gonna play something a little more serious. E four and something decent. I don't mind sacrificing a pawn, but games like that make Fuchsia's accusations of me playing passively look good. I mean, this is really... Let's try F4. I can't play, I can't play passive every game. That was horrendous. Alright. Must take King's Gambit. What's that? Yeah, actually, this has become, like, kind of one of the main ways for black to play. This move order limits white's options. If you if you play the king's gamut accepted, um, white can play bishop c4 on move, you know, move 3. But um, this Falkbeer move order and then taking on f4 kind of limits white to basically playing knight f3. I don't play the King's Gambit much. Okay, Uber Driver is some weird Bishop E2 suggestion. What is that, like some Bronstein thing? Did he do that? I can't remember. Um, oh, Soul Soul Healer, Bob's friend. Jim remembered. Tartakova versus Capablanca, eh? I think Magnus has played the King's Gambit, right? Wow, C6. That's aggressive. Alright. Santiago. We played before, I don't remember um, exactly. Wow, I lost to him in Blitz. But that was that obstacle or bishop thing. I timed out? I can't remember. Wish I knew what I was doing, guys. I need a little help here. He's 1886. He has no fear. Apparently. Why do I want to do this D5? Surely I'm overextending myself. Surely I'm overextending myself. So Carlson's played in Blitz Banner. Yeah, it's a fun opening for for any kind of banter chest for sure. Man, this guy is good. I have a really bad feeling about this. I think I'm just gonna get slaughtered by this guy. I don't like my king there. Okay, but he's playing a little too quick. <laughs> he's used 15 seconds for the first 12 moves. Does he play, like, bullet chess all the time, or what? He has a thousand bullet games. 
a thousand blitz so even but I mean he's playing a little too quick knight e5 looks interesting Knight e5. Not taking right away, but this first. Push g pawn. Maybe later. Maybe later. Bronstein says we have to develop the pieces first. But I think his position is probably about equal. Hopefully, he's making some mistake. He walked into that. I had it all planned out. It's all connected to King H1. Prophylactic move, avoiding that. Then this. We pick up a, a loose exchange with Knight G6. He just played a little bit too quick. He needs to use his time. Very complicated position. I mean, the King's Gambit, of all things leads to really irrational positions. And the more irrational the position is, the more time you you know you need to use. I mean, I spent a minute and a half, two and a half minutes almost. So he just resigned, but bad time management. That was the line I was hoping for. So it, it was lucky, but I mean, if we look at the opening again, it's bad for me, I'm gonna bet. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, this much is okay, you know, but I don't know the theory after this, so let's see. Let's see what the engine says. D4. I took. Harman Yankman played this. I'm not supposed to take this pawn. <laughs> I played takes like a sucker. So you're supposed to play D4. Get rid of the F4 pawn. That's too much of a nuisance. All right, I understand. The way I played it, this is a novelty. He gets to hang on to this pawn. And not surprisingly, um, both games that were played here. Oris Popovich from 1990. Late poppy game. Um, relatively late, anyway. Not that late, I guess. He was around to the late 90s. But um, Zelich, <laughs> that's the guy who plays the Smith Mora. I played C3 against, against Mladen and Zelich to try to get him to play a reversed Smith Mora. Um, yeah, this is just dubious. D5, 97. Well, this is Popovich against some guy. 1990. Poppy played bishop c4. Bishop d7, take, take. Just clear advantage for black because I'm overextended. Damn, dude. That's harsh. Rook d8 and plus 1.6 for black. This pawn, do you think this pawn is going to last long here for white? The naked eye, it's like six pawns against six pawns. The d5 pawn is just like going to die. And white is going to be a pawn down. If he plays rook d8. So one mistake gives me the pawn back. And the second mistake, and he's in trouble tactically. Again, I'm kind of opportunistic, but lucky. Guys, we have time for one or two more games. So let's get some challenges out there. I'm streaming for another... I'm supposed to be streaming for another 20 minutes. Some... Some challenges, Asturbate is here, hasn't played. Uber driver's too tough. We don't want to play him, Jim. Jim's not into the blitz. He likes bullet. I think we're going to get a Fuchsia challenge. I might have to go and, and find a victim in the lobby. <laughs> when we're desperate, we go to the victim and find... Find find a victim in lobby. That's funny that Blaze of Glory said that because I went to the supermarket yesterday and, and this guy who's seen me, he's like one of the regular checkout guys at the supermarket. He makes a comment like, you look like you put on weight. I was like, dude, you're a checkout guy at the supermarket. You're not supposed to make comments like that about the like, customers. Um, <laughs> I've put on probably two pounds in the last uh, two weeks. So I got challenges from a bunch of friends here. Wow. I don't even know where to start. Wow, we've got four challenges. Now too many, guys. What am I going to do? 
Um, okay, Dimitra Last is not a subscriber. Um, Anita, is just, these two I'm gonna take because they're they're tier three subs. So I'm gonna play Anita and Acerbate, our two tier three subs. They get they get VIP treatment. All right, weird openings. I just played Knight F3. Um, hard to play weird openings after Knight F3 a little bit. But we'll try to figure something out. You played the... Actually, you played Knight C6, so that makes it kind of cool. A Mexican defense of sorts. Thanks, Arsenal fan. I want to play Astrobate, though. He never plays Blitz. Thanks to Dimitri Lass. I didn't expect you guys to get any... I didn't expect to get any challenges. Then I got four. Um... Okay, so this is not really an opening um, that's unusual for me. So I should try something to make it kind of cool here. Well, what can we do that's out of the bounds of normality that's sound for white here? E4. That doesn't look sound. That's like a really unsound gambit. Bishop F4 I played against Fredell. That's not unusual. What would be unusual but sound for white? Man, it's hard to come up with something unusual but sound here. B3. That's our theme of the day. Warnaki suggested E3. A3 is good. Good suggestion. This is a little bit like the game with, with I Take Back. Like, pretty much the same. I love the pawn sack here against the Fianchetto. I think e5 is a good... It's probably a sound pawn sacrifice. Just like e5, take, 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 knight f6. Um, a reverse of the game with... with I take back. Um, this is Ponda. Ponda style. Check it out. h5. Unusually passive. Unusually passive-aggressive. So h5 brings out, brings out our Ponda to the house. Um, Ponda's favorite move, h5 or h4. <clears throat> Obviously not appropriate here. <clears throat> that is inappropriate for black to play h5. How can we punish? Central. A wing attack should be met by a strike in the center. So passive counts as a novelty, d3. All right. Weakness. Weakness in the house. Not that easy to exploit here with this slow moving B3 setup. I could get hit by knight B4 too. It's like a really demented kind of Chigorin, really, that's what it is. Knight B4, asking for it, huh? Man, this is just bizarre. Some great variations here. Knight H4, doesn't seem right. Guys, thanks for joining me for my stream. These are my last two games for today. We're going to be back with a subscriber stream on Thursday night. That is tomorrow. So this is funky. Like, queen g6 check. Queen f7, then a3. And if queen g6, knight g6, knight c2 check. King d1. Knight a1, knight h8. And I drop my b3 pawn? Oh, man. That sucks. I mean, the default plan was to just play queen d1 if I have to. Queen g6 check, king queen f7, a3, take, take, knight check, king d1, knight a1, knight h8, knight b3. You get away. 
I don't like that. And I want to play knight a3. But man, maybe I just have to play like queen d1. This is really sad. There's other demented moves like g5. What am I going to do? Queen d1, g5, knight g6, queen h7. <laughs> Focusing in on c2. That's a cool variation. All right. We're going to have to find an improvement on a3. King d2. Triplex clan. The center. King in the center. Rubenstein. The centralized king. I don't know about this. Pretty experimental stuff we're doing here. Definitely not safe. Now black has a decent game. G5... She might even be better. Getting a little too weird for me with my king in the center here. What took with the knight? Bishop b4 is on the way. Oh, that's unpleasant. I'm scared. Nice. Active king. The active king never cries. She's got bishop c6 and some stuff like that. Let's tuck this king back here. Away from the danger zone. I mean, maybe I should have stayed in the center at d2, objectively. I kind of wimped out there. We're thinking about endgame. We're thinking about putting our pawns on the correct color. Good stuff like that. Exchange sacrifice. She's trying to break out with e5. We could do rook takes c6, sack and exchange. I don't mind that, but it's not really enough. There's other complications like bishop c4 check. I mean, black has to be very careful. Protected pass pawns. Yeah, that's probably bad for her, actually. She can't really do that. e5 allows d5, which probably just loses for black. So she's drifted into a contortion here. Black is now clearly worse. contortionist with the time advantage just keep putting pawns on the right color uh-oh all right this could get unpleasant for black now it's like the ultimate stonewall dutch i have 95 coming I want to allow h4, though. Acerbate, you better not go anywhere. <laughs> You're next. Don't even think about it. 95. Bang. Hopefully my bishop was on f3. She blinked. If bishop e8 in an uber driver, Merle actually, Merle would be the one. Bishop e8. I have a pawn win with like knight, knight c6, bishop c6, bishop a6 there. <laughs> Maybe I'm winning either way. All right. Which way do I take? Still not that simple. In game land. Dropped a pawn. Two pawns. Pawns are pieces too. Okay, she, she just played too fast. School of time management. 
the Egyptian school of time management. Your time will come back along the river Euphrates a little bit later down the line. All right, thank you for the game, Anita. Last game against Astrobait. That was a good opening for her, though. I like that. That was fun. Okay, Astrobate, what are we going to do? We got to take him out. We got to take him out. What does Astrobate do against Elyakin's defense? I've probably played it against him before. The amusing thing Astrobate's closing in on 100 games, guys. This is 97. We've got four, four, three more to go after this. Um, let's offer him a take back. <laughs> it's rude, right? All right, no. He's gambiting this pawn. This is not a blunder. Astrobate is playing a new system against Aliakin's defense. Euphrates is not in Egypt. It's close. It was close. Um, very close. D4. Still, I'm still geographically better than Donald Trump. D4. What am I going to do? Well, I like this Astrobait. Spirited Gambit. <laughs> what am I going to do? We'll just bring it back, okay? It's going to get attacked anyway. Has no business out there. He's tempting me into playing d5. He does this a lot where he moves his bishops out, and I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just too much. Let's be principled. Let's be principled. No offense for an American guy, you're really good at geography. I actually like geography. And when I do like Jeopardy questions or something, that's one of the only categories where I'm not completely in trouble. But I think that my geographical knowledge is better than average, although not great. Um, my seventh, I had a good inspiring seventh grade geography teacher, Mrs. Bogan. She made us pronounce United Arab Emirates like perfectly. I never thought I'd be talking about my seventh grade geography teacher. That's just weird. But anyway, here we go, guys. Last game for today. Astrobate, the anti aliakin gambit. Fuchsia, does that exist? The Lemberger Gambit, okay. Even if it's not good chess, it's good cheese. No, that's Limburger, right? Terrible dad joke. Good cheese, get it? Oh man, alright. Bishop G6. I like this 95 move though. Correct. She passed out because you guys were so bad. I'm sure you were piping up derogatory comments about the teacher under your breath, secretly. Fuchsia hurt her feelings. <laughs> That's probably what happened. All right, Astro, be consistent, sir. Be consistent. Be the ball. How does he recapture, actually? Interesting. Keeping the pieces on the board. Ninety four. Maybe I should just focus on developing. I was a little bit concerned about G five there.
Okay, guys, I'm getting a little bit... A little bit tired. It's martini time, but... Um, Acerbate, this is game 97. What I wanted to note was what's cool about our Acerbate and myself is that we've played 97 games now, and in 96 thus far, there are no draws. So you can't complain that the fight between Acerbate and myself is not, not existing. No Grandmaster draws between Acerbate and myself. 93 wins and 3 losses. It's all blood and guts when we play. He's never had a draw in 5,000 games on Leech S. <laughs> I'm just making that up. I'm sure there have been a few, but I'm not one of the lucky customers. He almost got a draw against me once, but he, he refused. He, like, impaled himself on his own sword instead. So now check for the sake of checking. Always a good idea. Queen h4 check. We do have queen g3, which looks quite invasive. I think that's going to cause him some serious discomfort. Though then again, my queen could get trapped. Queen h4 check. King f1. Queen g3. Now he's got to find a special move. I feel like I'm getting lured into a trap. I mean, I'm up a pawn here, and he doesn't have any real compensation for it. Screw it. I'm not going to go for that. Try to be practical when you're up material. Um, I do the stream, and I do try to give people practical advice. I think this is, you know, something I'm going to play if I see a concrete line where it just, it just wins. I win material, win a pawn, cause some kind of concrete disaster. I don't see it, you know, like, and it could end up that my queen is out of play. If I was, oh, he's 1666, nice. If I was um, not up a pawn, I would be more likely to go for queen h4. But I think that when I was younger, people were asking me how to, Arsenal fan asked how my style changed and stuff. I had a friend who used to joke about me when I was younger. He said that I would prefer unclear to slightly better. That was his definition of my style. That is definitely not the case anymore. So I, I changed. I mellowed out. I wasn't always passive. Um, I was definitely like too aggressive at some points in my early master life. Um, and I kind of toned it down. Queen h4. This is his favorite move, by the way. <laughs> Bishop e3. Queen h4 check could be different now. Queen h4 check looking a little more interesting than it used to. I can't take it anymore. I'm just drawn to this. Another piece that's unprotected in the same zone. And he's forced to play knight f2. And he's not a happy camper. He does have a... No, he doesn't. <laughs> I was about to say he has a check. Uh, yeah, he has a check on H a4. But that's not really on here. Tactical radar. The tactical radar turned on. I think slow testosterone. Testosterone. Whatever happened to chest? Chest testosterone. What was his name? Chest testosterone. What was his name? Knight f3. No way, dude. You can save yourself. Turkey farm. Thank you. Bob remembers. Have not seen Turkey Farm in quite a while. That's not good. All right, Astrobate, you, you tricked me. Might have to settle for something. Bishop f4. I feel like I'm missing something blatant now. See, this is how your queen gets trapped if you're not careful. That's dangerous, man. Knight takes f2. Bishop f2. Queen f4. Maybe that's the simplest. But you take with a rook, too. But knight f2... It gets a little dicey. 
You know, if he gets that queen a4 check going on, that's what he wants. This is what I was afraid of when I brought my queen to a weird position. I don't like my queen having so few squares to move to. Bishop c5, knight c5, holding a4. You don't like your queen to be completely almost trapped in any situation. When we look at the game afterwards, I just want to... I'm going to finish the stream, guys. Tomorrow night, 5.30 is the next stream. Subscriber stream. I'll send a notice out to the subscribers, but... Um, just want to note after the game, when I played the move queen h4 or move 16, I'd like to look for a brief second with Stockfish... Because my gut instinct was that that move was wrong. You know, like, I shouldn't go on this adventure with my queen. Master has got b5 lined up. Plus, he's about to castle. You won't like me when I'm angry. Acerbate. Darn it, my queen is just totally stuck there. Okay, but he can't castle either. So we have time? Time is money. I can get my queen out if I have to retract the bishop and give myself a d6 square. He's going to go king d1, king c2. Change the game, Bob. Look how crafty. That's his name, Crafty. Wasn't that the original name for Stockfish, or is it not connected? Was was Stockfish originally Crafty? Was that a different program altogether? Got Astrobate going for the the Rook G two Queen trap. Beautiful. It's a different engine. Are you sure? Okay. I thought maybe they were originally connected. They might be related, though. Who knows? Brothers. Sisters. Someone knows. But it's not important. No, I mean, Crafty was... No, it was a, it was a well-known engine into the 2000s, Bob. Not that ancient. And Astrobate just very good at staying alive. Rook h3. While gaining space. I mean, knight e4 drops a pawn. Knight e4, pawn e4, queen e4. I don't get it, you know? Maybe I'd f5 at the end of the line or some crazy stuff. I can always sack my queen. I had this weird feeling I lost my queen there. That was that was creeping me out. Um, all right, get back. And he's still got attacking chances with g5. Damn, dude, he won't stop. You know the one thing I really appreciate with Astrobate is that he doesn't make a lot of blunders. Pretty steady. I should have played queen e5 last move and offered a trade of queens. That was a big mistake. I wasted the tempo. I don't like my queen being opposite the rook on d1. I mean, there's tons of moves I could play. Take care, Anita. Thanks for being a subscriber. I guess now I can play knight e4 next move. And we're pretty much safe for now. We got all of his pieces in the game. His king is still safe. There's a slight problem of being down two pawns for white, but this was Weird Wednesday, and Acerbate played... You know, the game was e4, knight f6, knight f3. So you got to give him credit for putting up a fight. You know, a clear pawn down out of the gate. Um, he's still got some hope 
in this position, sort of. Knight g4 is coming. This is this is dumb. No, no, no. He's got b4. I've got to be careful. I don't lose my mind here. All right, you know what? Man, I hate giving up my bishop. Knight e4 anyway. Damn, he's still keeping himself alive here. Screw it. I'm up two pawns. I'm up two pawns, man. I'm going to grind you down. I'm just going to grind you down. He's very systematic. Good job hanging in two pawns down. Maybe h5. Still got some stuff going on. This was a big, big commitment. b4. Wow. All right, I got to go for it. I'm a little off sides, but that c3 pawn is, that's going to be a problem. Tying him down to that. Probably his last serious mistake. Just doesn't have enough pieces left on the board to have an attack. But it wasn't necessary to play b4. This is the kind of thing he should have done instead, I believe. All right, before he has time to really generate some play here, I'm going to get more material, get me some, get, get me some exchanges. Knight f6, check. No, this is going to be a safe, solid victory. He's running out of stuff. Good try by Astrobate. Look at that move. Trying to keep me from castling. No. Oh, the ultimate rook in game. Come on. There it is. Oh no. Multi pawn. All right, Astrobate. Thank you for the game, man. <laughs> I want to see, first of all, if anyone's ever played this. Knight f3. Limburger. Oh my gosh. There's actual games. Hrachek played it. Some guy drew Josef Pinter with white? Wow. I can't believe that. Hrachek played this with white. And a 2395 drew with Yoji. <laughs> this can't be right. It can't be right. Like, there's no way that Polak and, and Pinter didn't take the pawn on e4. There's something wrong about this. There's something wrong with the database. What is this? It's like a, a, it's a mistake or something. Like Yoji would take. I mean, of course, Polak would take. <laughs> I don't get it, guys. But anyway, I wanted to see when I went Queen H4, um, here, what, what our engine thinks. Merle Dixon, thanks for the donation. Leading the way with 801 bits this week. Jim with 500. Delacorta 150. Dragon BC, Mr. Coffee. Thank you, guys. Don't forget you can donate with a streaming donation through the, the Panda GIF on the Twitch page. Also, check out my channel uh, on YouTube, Video Chess Training on YouTube. You can also check out our Discord channel, Pub Slaggy, on Discord. So Queen H4 check was the right move. Interesting. I second-guessed myself. Knight F2, a blunder. King E2. Wow, King E2. And I was going to play Queen G3. But you could do what, what you did in the game, basically, knight f3. So you could play it better. Anyway, Astro Bay, thank you for the game. Interesting opening, guys. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for joining the stream, guys. And um, have a great night. I'll send out a message. I've already got a lot of submissions for tomorrow night's 5.30 p.m. subscriber stream for game analysis. But we've still got room for a couple more. So you're welcome, guys. Thanks again for the donations and for joining. Good night, everyone. Take back, Arsenal fan, Anita, Jim, Fuchsia, Merle Dixon, Bob Sakamano, Acerbate, just to name a few, Jim. HTFP, thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll see you tomorrow night. 
I hope. Bye bye. Bye bye.